when we need to prepare for a competitive defense, our go-to company is the Army Painter. Thanks to their complete range of paints, spray cans, and gaming tools, we're able to complete our new armies and units in no time. When we need to elevate the quality of our models and terrain, the Army Painter is always our first choice. You may not know this, but the Army Painter has sponsored more competitive events than any other hobby company. Turner and Wargaming is in their DNA. Visit thearmypainter.com to learn more about their amazing products. And use promo code AWPaints for a 5% discount from your Army Painter purchases. What are you waiting for? Discover the best way to prepare your models for events with the Army Painter today. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to The Art of War. We have a super exciting one for you today. It is Fix My List, our weekly Thursday feature in which we go ahead and fix some of the lists from our dedicated War Room members. And if you want to be one of those members, you can check out the warroom.vhx.tv. There's a three-day free trial. Once you're in our Discord community space, there is, uh, you'll get the War Room tag, you'll get your faction tags, and in the War Room channels is a Fix My List submission uh, thread where you can go ahead and post your list every single week and we rotate through we go chaos we go imperium space marine xenos sometimes yeah. when a codex releases like tau last week we went ahead and did a tau special yep. so this is a weekly feature if you want to get your list fixed and um, in addition if you're hanging out with us uh, as you like to do I know uh, this is a lot of people's morning routine uh, nowadays so if you like that give us a like subscribe to the channel and tell your friends about us all of that massively helps us grow the YouTube channel in addition leave a comment below letting us know which list of the ones that we fix that you like the most and uh, which factions you're most excited to see less fi fixed for in the future absolutely absolutely yeah this is just a fun time it's just kind of hanging out and talking yeah. warhammer talking warhammer and there's a lot of lists in the game there's That's a right. lot of ideas and some of them are great and some of them are others are interesting listen all lists Very are created equal but some of them are far more equal than others <laughs> <laughs> just saying but I was talking to you about this yesterday. Um, the average quality of our lists that we receive on Fix My List has gone up dramatically to the point where it can sometimes be tough to find lists where you have a meaningful amount of things to change about them. Yeah. So that is, uh, that's it's interesting. It's heartening to, to see. If you happen to submit a list that is basically tournament worthy already, we give you the gold star and. Um you know, we move on to other ones, but uh, there's there's plenty of lists to fix. There was a gold star, actually. Yeah, there was a GSC list that was very meta. It's probably one of the better ways you can play GSC. There's some small tweaks that could have been done, but honestly, it's just basically tournament ready right there. Yeah, if you show up and you're like, well, this one character out of eight could probably be a different character out of 12, then like, fix my list done, let's go, woo! Yeah, exactly. So, and some factions have more design space than others. Um, you know, some factions are kind of shoehorned into particular builds, but that's why if you post a really interesting off-the-wall build, um, at least there's a lot of room to, to work with it. Speaking of which, I think we have got a, couple a couple of those. We got a couple of those. We definitely have a couple. It's not where we're starting. Where we're starting is a pretty, pretty solid list, and we're going to try and iterate on it a bit. But before we do that, we have a super chat from Thetmas. Me member for 12 months at the War Room Gold. Thank you. You're a rock. It says thank you guys You're for your hard work. You're stone, in fact. Thank you for your hard work. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm so glad that uh, you enjoy the content and you're here hanging out with us. Listen, if viewing our content were easy, no one would, you know, everyone would do it. <laughs> everyone would do it. <laughs> So. If everybody wanted to learn at 10 a.m. in the morning. That's right. <laughs> Hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> They'd all be here. <laughs> all right. So we're going to start off with, in fact, Rock and Stone. It was a little bit of a spoiler. It is but we Votan. got the Leagues of Votan. It is Votan. So tell me, Siegs. What is, what is Ice Mansty? Ice Man Sti, Ice Man N S T I. I I don't really know. He's the Ice Man for sure. I, That's I what puzzled I over it for quite a while, <laughs> quite a while. But this was a late push of uh, of lists being dropped into our Discord. By the way, if you if you want to get your list fixed, go to the link down below. Yeah. All right. So what's in this list here, Siegs? So, we have, obviously, Leagues of Votan are Index, so they only have the one detachment, but uh, we got a variety of options here. First off is the Call. He is almost certainly the Warlord here, and he has the Enhancement of Praise and Glare to pick an objective in your command phase, and you count as having plus one Judgment Token on the uh, that targets that are on it, which is, in my opinion, still the best Enhancement, but I still, uh, I think Grim Demeter is pretty close. 
Then you have the Brokeer Iron Master. This guy gives plus one to the hit to the unit he's leading, which is Thunderkin. He can go inside of them, and he brings a bunch of little friends along. He can also repair vehicles, which is nice. Then you have 10 Hearthkin Warriors. These guys are your main troops. They don't really do any damage. They are mostly there because you can split them in the Sagittar, so a 10-man becomes two 5-mans, and they have sticky objectives. Then there's three Sagittars. This is the main cheaper transport. It's got a scout move. It's pretty fast. It does okay amount of firepower. It's a complete lottery whether the big gun's going to do any damage or a lot of damage. Um, but and listen, you buy more lottery tickets. If you buy a lot of lottery tickets, anything can happen. Anything can happen. <laughs> some of them roll five hits. Some of them roll one hit. You never know. But some of them roll zero. <laughs> some of them roll zero. It's uh, great when that happens. But uh, <laughs> Then we have five Berserks here. This is uh, one of the main combat units. And they have the mauls, so they have flat three damage on their attacks. And then they get a free mole launcher, which can do a little bit of indirect fire, but mostly it's there to debuff enemy uh, infantry and, and such units, uh, giving them minus two to move, advance, and charge rolls. Then you have two six-man Brokeer Thunderkin units, both with the Graviton Blast Cannon, almost certainly the best weapon that they can access. It is uh, Anti-Vehicle 2+, plus, which is a very rare Q. Like, that's, I think it's the only instance of Anti in the whole index. Um, oh, in the index? Probably in they don't, index, like, have rules. They basically don't have any of the keywords that most of the other factions do, but they have Anti-Vehicle 2+, plus, which is an extremely strong rule because there's a lot of really good vehicles out there. Uh, it is a blast weapon, and they're relatively slow, but having the, the uh, Iron Master go in there means they're always plus one to hit, and they can overwatch on fives, um, which means they can help chip something down. You leave a vehicle on two wounds, well, if it wants to move, overwatch. Then 10, Hearthguard. This unit is like a mixed bag of decent shooting, good defense, and um, a good rapid ingress threat, and then it's okay in combat. So they have the Vulcanites here, which can do uh, devastating wounds on sixes to wound, and um, it is almost certainly going to be joined by the Call, and the Call will give it lethal hits. Yes. Um, it's just a pretty solid unit, kind of hard to shift, not super expensive. Really loves the Void Armor access for that minus one to incoming AP, sitting in cover when the character is inside their minus one to wound, if the strength is greater. So it's pretty solid unit overall, although I still think it's quite pricey for what you get. It is, and it has the Achilles heel that it has two wounds apiece with no damage reduction. So if something yeah, does mortal wounds... Mine, always minus one damage yeah. with two wounds. If something is does mortal wounds, you hate it more than most Terminator equivalent sort of deals would. Uh, and anything that's decent or high AP, high strength, damage two, is going to cut right through the unit. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, it's very durable. Yeah, Void Armor is only one CP for Votan. Uh, they have a 2CP strat, which is Reactive Reprisal, where if you shoot one of their units, they can shoot back for 2CP uh, after you've resolved attacks. Uh, I think that's the only one that's 2CP. Everything else is 1. The, uh, also, the key thing about Void Armor is it, like the Grey Knight's True Silver Armor, it is not a battle tactic, so it cannot be manipulated CP-wise. Um, so, you know, vect abilities won't increase its CP cost, which yeah, is quite important. Which which does matter, because every time I played Grey Knights and I played into Vect, and I'm like, Armor Contempt, they go Vect, I'm like, I'm sorry, what I actually meant to say was True Silver, was true armor. silver armor. Or Gear Strat, my man. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's actually the armor. I'm not doing it. It's the armor, so have fun with that. Then we got two Hecatons, good, solid vehicle, has Ignore's cover, decent amount of shots, and then pretty durable profile. And then finally, two units of Hurricane Pioneers. These are the bikes. They move 12. They have fly, something that's very rare in this uh, this faction. And they also can go back into reserve if they're within six of a board edge at the end of the opponent's turn. Great unit. All right. So what are your first thoughts here? Let's, let's talk about first thing. Two units of Thunderkin. So I already mentioned Anti-Vehicle 2+. <laughs> this was the first thing you said when I showed you the list. <laughs> so <laughs> two units of Thunderkin. Uh, one unit I think you can totally get away with. Two, you absolutely cannot. And I'll explain why. These guys move five inches. There's no assault. Do they advance and shoot? There's, there's no way to advance and shoot in this book. There's yeah. like two assault weapons. I think it's... I think there's one in the Hearthkin Warriors that you can take, and there's one on the bikes, I believe. The bike shotguns are yeah. assault. Yeah. So that, that's the only two instances. Any of the good weapons, you're not allowed to advance and shoot with it, unfortunately. So they're very slow off the board. And they don't have deep strike, and there's no way to give it to them, so they can't just rapid ingress into the middle of the table and then move out from a ruin. So they have to come in from the flanks, which is not always the worst thing, but it's also not quite ideal. Now, it's, it's workable, but it's not workable for two units, right? Exactly. There's not enough threats near the edge of the board that your opponent's going to give you without screening out where two units of Thunderkin are going to get Certainly capitalized on that. Yeah. yeah, one unit comes in off a flank, does damage, two units, well, one comes off the flank and does damage, and the other one cheers them on. Yeah, so I found this, I've run multiple Thunderkin in the past, and I always found that it's very hard to get 
activations out of multiple of these units, and it's pretty easy to screen them. And then the three mans just don't do enough by themselves. So I think one is good. You have the character who goes inside, and the re and the what we want to add here is Grim Demeanor, because that will give this unit ignore modifiers. And that's a huge deal because they're AP2 but don't ignore cover. So against like a land raider, if you have at least the Grim Demeanor, they can't armor of contempt to any effect. Yeah, and armor of contempt is brutal with cover uh, against that unit because yes. they just it just tells you, hey, stop doing damage. In addition, um, they also will ignore you know various other uh, modifiers that How matter. Many points is grim demeanor. It's twenty points, so he'll go to eighty five. That's a pretty decent character, and he comes with a bunch of idiots you can throw saves on, right? Hundred percent, and you can void armor the unit just to tank a little bit more. Uh, Does he, he have comes an with the Ironkin assistant? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay, but he does come with just some doofuses. He comes with an iron kin assistant and three little ecogs, and then himself. Yeah, and any time a las cannon hits the unit, oh, I'm sorry, ecog, it was your time to die. <laughs> Good night, sweet ecog. <laughs> <laughs> he gone. It's, it's very helpful. It's like how Grimaldus protects a unit that he's in by having a bunch of little, little crap guys that can take a save when required. Exactly. Um, so that's pretty powerful. Now, so the first one unit will stay. The second unit, I think, has to go here. Sounds perfectly acceptable. Boop. Okay. Now, I've played a lot of games with Votan, and nobody loves Hearthguard more than me, but I personally have found that it's very hard to get use out of a 400-point unit. It's just not worth 400 points. I, my 320 first, plus the yeah. character, whether you pick the Ironier Champion, which I kind of prefer over the call. Get that reroll. And Lethal Aids kind of takes away a little bit from the Vulcanite, but it buffs the other weapons. Regardless, it's a 410 point unit. It can be a bit cheaper if you're on the champ. It's not doing ever that amount. So you tell me if I'm on the right track yeah. here, because you play Votan, and I don't. But my impression of Votan, at its best, is when it's an MSU army, where you have a million units that all kind of shoot and all kind of... I mean, not punch, but like do stuff. <laughs> Where they all kind of shoot and they all kind of do things. And you want a, lot, a of lot of them. And then they're a, just a little bit harder to kill than you're going to want them to be. This army basically has minimal rerolls. And so you need a lot of activations to guarantee that you kill enough stuff. Yeah. And so we need to spread our damage out a bit more. Now, I'm not against Hearthguard. I actually quite like the five mans in Hecatons, and we have two of them here. So um, I'm not against making those two five-man units, using the Hecaton to get reroll wounds on their Vulcanite, and then they're just a solid piece, but they don't require tons of investment. Um, or we can go for a vehicle-heavy MSU list. What are, what are you feeling? Because I, I'm i actually legitimately interested in Votan as an MSU vehicle build. All right, like, let's, I think let's that's do, actually exciting. Let's do the vehicle builds. Um, we'll have the one Thunderkin unit, but that'll be basically the core of our, like, that'll be our rapid ingress threat yeah. from, from a flank. To keep people honest. Yeah, or it can advance up the board if we really need it to. But. Grim Demeanor to, you know, to let it ignore mods and actually do damage to a broad variety of things. Like, a Land Raider actually kind of doesn't want to take that. No, it doesn't really want to. Uh, I actually played it, it again a while back against uh, like Quinn's Death Guard, and he had a Land Raider in it, and he took too many saves. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> All right. So, where's Gaz asking the tough questions? Two dollars super chat. How do orcs get around minus one damage custodians? And then responds, fight on death. I mean, that, that just is. That's that is how you uh, get around minus one damage custodians. You fight on death. You fight on death. Yep, or you, if they're strung out, you hit them on, you base a bunch of models with some trash, like a truck, and then you hit the other end of the unit. Yep. There's, uh, there's ways to do it. There's yep. plenty of worm games where we do it. <laughs> there's a there's a game, I believe, on YouTube where I uh, my orcs take Quentin's custodies out to the cleaners. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yes, fight on death gets around any defensive mechanics, because it's not the unit fighting. It's a technical thing. Anyway. So... Okay, so 10 Thunderkin uh, Hearthkin Warriors. I still think you take these guys because Sticky Objectives is quite nice for this army and it becomes two cheap units for you. Okay, I'm just deleting the stuff that we're cutting out right now. Yep. Sounds good. Okay, and adding Grim Demeanor to the Iron Master. Mm -hmm. All right, we have 560 points left. Okay, let's go ahead and add a third bike unit because I think those guys are essential. Yeah, the bikes are great. No complaints here. They just shoot a little too hard, move a little too fast, scout a little too much. They're just great. 
Okay, so we have three Sagittars and exactly three units that can go inside of them. So if we want to add more Sagittars, we have to add more trash units. We basically. do, yes. Or we can add a third land fort and we don't have to add any extra trash. <clears throat> yes, because we have enough to go in the Sagittars. I mean, um, let's see. We can add one more squad of warriors to add uh, two more Sagittars, or we could go with two more Berserk squads to add two more Sagittars. Two more Berserk squads had two more Sagittars. That would be a grand total of 430, which would leave us with an unfortunate 40 points remaining. There's nothing we can do with that. Nothing really to be done there. I mean, that list is pretty decent. That list is pretty decent. The Berserks give us some amount of melee pressure, but no. I, how much do you think we need the Berserks? Uh, it's meta dependent against certain armies. They're actually pretty decent because it's 15 flat three damage attacks uh, That'll plus one to hit plus one to wound so they'll hit on threes wound a lot of things at strength nine on twos So it's a decent counter assault. My thing about hearthkin warriors is that they are literally are trash There's no way this unit should be 110 points. Do you think that Quentin would call them trash? He, he should call them trash if he didn't if he called them support or anything else I would actually get mad because they are the definition of trash They're a unit that has a bunch of upgrades that pretend to do something and the unit does literally zero So I hate running more than one of them But that's the best way to add multiple Sagittars into a list. Yes, because you, you, get you split them up and you get can you put a ten man in two five minutes? Yep, you don't have to split. Yep, you can just put five five, or you can do five in a transport, five out if you don't if your transport's already full. Sounds good. So um, that's that's the real conundrum. Berserks are one hundred percent in my mind better than warriors. I mean, because they actually do something. Yeah, right. But at the same time, we get less Sagittars with them. Yeah, they so berserks have feel no pain five plus two wounds. They're kind of annoying to kill quickly. They have four of fight on death. Yes. What is your what's your instinct here? My instinct would be, I think the most we want to go to is four Sagittars and get the third land for it. I really like the ability to ignore cover is just a rule that isn't very common in this book. The bikes can get it on a model, the Horth Karthkin warriors can get it, and land forts can get it. Everything else does ignore cover. There's a lot of AP1 in this book. Yeah, AP1 that doesn't ignore cover doesn't is do AP0, it. yes. And... Um, I really like the Hecaton profile, personally. Yeah. I've run multiple in, in a variety of games, and they always are quite solid. In um, They're hard to deal with for a lot of armies, because it's 2-up save, yeah. Void Armor, it's T12, 16 wounds, and then we have the we have the Iron Master here who can heal them, flat 3. That's pretty good. So we're left with 30 points remaining at the end of all this. Okay, well, once again, there's nothing we can do about that, except we could drop one Hurricane Pioneer unit and get two champs. And Just they two solo champs? They would pop out of the land forts, or they can start in reserve if we really want to, and they could be our relatively cheap stuff. They, they do mortals on the charge, and they're okay in combat. Uh, we could go that direction. We could go with less Sagittars and more other stuff. Or we could just take a list that's 30 under. Yeah, we, we, could, I mean, we actually, could do the Age of Sigmar thing, where if there were triumphs in this game, we would get some sort of benefit, because nobody runs list 30 points under. But there's nothing to get for 30 points. Yeah. If I was playing this, I would cut the one uh, Pioneer unit and get two champs. Because I actually like the champs popping out of the land forts. But that would... One Pioneer for two champs? Yep. Because if 120 points, the champs are 60 each. And the champs are not bad. I actually quite like them. Uh, I've been running five-man Hearthguard with uh, champs inside. And they, they do solid work. So this is an Ein here champion... Yep. How many points? 60? 60. That's pretty cheap. And he'll come with a hammer, he'll do mortals on the charge, and he's just a decent piece. And if we need him to do some sort of mission play thing, he can totally do it. It's not even like you're um, giving up assassinate here. No, by taking I mean, them, whoa, right? 12 Oh, you get 12. Whoa. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Um, I mean, they'll get it when they draw the card, but like that's not the end of the world. Um, I think my the way I would probably finish this list if... Like, the, what I'd probably do is I'd probably drop the Thunderkin and just go more into the Sagittar concept. But yeah. you don't have to do that. Yeah. And it's hard, though. Like, you drop that unit with the character. It's still, you have to add the, the unit to go inside. You also have to add, add a character. And then the Sagittars, yeah. So it probably ends up, you take the, what are the dudes who shoot a little too hard with the psychic weapon? The like Grimnir. A little, little harder than you think they would. Grimnir. Yeah. 65 points. You have to add some Grimnirs, I think, at that point. It'd be, a, be, it'd be pretty different. And the Thunderkin, one unit coming off the flank, rapid ingressing, does a lot of damage. 
Yeah. <clears throat> so we could also go that direction if you dropped one of the Berserk squads here with the third and have no champs and instead have the Pioneer unit. So we'd have the 30 extra points, 130 for the Berserks. We could add two Grimnirs instead. Uh, I, I do actually want to leave the Thunder. Or you're keeping the Thunderkin? I'm saying if we drop the two champs, we go back to what we had, right. drop the two champs, you have the 90-point Pioneer unit, we have 30 points left over, right? Mm -hmm. If we cut one of these guys and add two Grimnirs, we still have the slot filled in the Sagittar, and then we could start one of the troop five-mans on the board to stick to the objective turn one. Do you think that's better? I quite like this, honestly. Yeah, I think this is probably, this feels to me to be better than that. Yeah, and the champs are annoying to kill. Four up in Vuln, five wounds, they're uh, two up save, you can void armor them. Yeah, they used to be even tougher, right? They used, they to, used to be minus one to wound. Minus one to wound, like minus one damage or something? Yeah, minus one damage, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're pretty, pretty nasty. They're but, pretty nasty. Uh, they're just good skirmish pieces now. Yeah, I, I've been liking them a lot. Uh, you don't get the reroll charges because you're not leading a unit, but it's fine. And this list shoots, uh, shoots pretty, pretty heckin' hard. Uh, heckin' hard, yeah, heckin, it does. <laughs> heckin' hard. So I think that's sure. the direction I would go, and uh, let us know how the list performs, Iceman. <laughs> <laughs> He's the Iceman. So somebody pointed out that it might be pronounced Iceman Nasty. Iceman Nasty? That, I mean, that, that could work. That would be pretty cool. Be like a rapper. Iceman Nasty. <laughs> In the house. Rockin' Stone. All right. <laughs> All right, His okay. hot All right. new album, Rockin' All right. Stone. All righty. Eldar. Let's talk some Eldar. Eldari. So this is this is Yunari, correct? This is Yunari because Yvrain is uh, the warlord. Okay. So what are the benefits of Yunari? Is that you get access to Drukari stuff? Yes. And is there anything else? Um, that's, that's, that's basically, that, that's it. used to it. be you get, like, six of Fino Pain and stuff on, on things, and, like, a better melee thing, right? Uh, yeah. I forget what Yunari was, but there was some additional benefit. It used to be you got, like, Fight First, which mattered a lot less in Ninth Edition than in 10th. Um, so, it used to be that you got, like, a, it was, like, a detachment, or, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I can make uh, up stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you used to get two in Uh, no, Yunari back in start of 8th edition was completely Same. bananas. Using your units multiple or times. Or end of 7th. Yeah, end of end of 7th or in 8th, every time a unit died, you got to, like, shoot, fight, move, or charge with a unit near it. Basically, 8th edition was the semi-death of Yunari, and then in Adepticon, the original, the first, like, after its codex came out, there was a Yunari build that won Adepticon, right? I think so. Yeah, I mean, are you talking about the double double spear Yunari? No, no, no. I'm talking later than that. I'm talking Eldar Codex. It was like three Ravagers and just all oh, guns. Oh yes, yes. Maybe yes. that was last year. That was maybe it was last year. But it was a Yunari it was, build that performed really well somewhere at a big tournament. Yeah, it was Yunari with three. Uh, it was this edition. Yeah, it was Yunari with three. Um, uh, Ravagers. Yep. And so the Ravagers who do a bunch of damage. I believe that was Zach. Yeah, point. Yep, that was Zach. Yeah. So All right. It's still done decently. Um, now let's see what we have here. This is Swollen 91. And I'm his so sorry. You should get that checked out by a doctor. You don't want to be swollen 91 times. Mm -hmm. Or with the 91st whatever. No, you do not want that. Particle. Listen, I've, I've experienced this. You do not want it. The Vizark, okay? I don't know what this guy does, frankly. <laughs> but well, he, we're going to find out. He's a Yunari out. character. Um, he is formerly an... He's formerly what? A, an Incubi? Uh, I don't... What's the listen, lore on him? <laughs> you, you're asking the wrong guy, my dude. Like, if you want, if you want Eldar backstory, I'm sure Quentin would be more than happy to take up your afternoon with it. I feel like he's a former, like, Incubi or something like that. But anyway, then he's a bodyguard of your brain, and then she is the cat lady, she's the Gyrix, which is cool, and uh, I also have no idea what she does besides let you access Yunari rolls, and you have to run her. Then there's a five-man troop unit. Those are Harlequins, five rangers for your infiltrate, and a little bit of shenanigans. Then two by five shadow specters. These guys have an inbuilt, effectively, fire and fade. They shoot, and then they can move up to six inches, right? Uh, Shadow Spectres? Yeah. Yes. And they have two different guns. One of them is Blast, and I think 411, and D6 Shots, which is pretty good. And the other one is 623, I believe. So they can handle a variety of profiles. They fire and fade after they shoot. You can tell which profiles here I've seen a lot and which I have not. The Vizark, I will have to look up. 
Uh, five warp spiders, one of the best units in the entire game. It's fast, it's got flamers, it's got dev wounds, it's amazing. It's one of the absolute best units in the game. Still pretty darn cheap for what you get, frankly. It, it's still pretty, pretty good. It's one of the elite, like, Eldar uh, aspect warrior units. It's very good. It moves absurdly fast. They roll one die to see if they take a mortal wound on a unit that has it, a two wound model. <laughs> It's a darn shit. I've never seen them roll the one. The downside is might as well not exist. Uh, great target for Phantasm and other shenanigans. Then five Swooping Hawks, they can go back into reserve. Can also beat up trash and is just a fast 14 inch moving thing. Yep. Assault. It's quite good. Then there's three D cannons. These are much more expensive than they started at, but they are still a very <laughs> they're still a very good indirect fire support piece. What is it? Strength 16. It's D3 shots, blast. It's strength either strength 14 or 16 AP. Four. Yes. Damage D6 plus two dev wounds. Yeah, it's it can do a lot of damage. If these things just stage in the middle of the table and you can't interact with them, they'll just pick up your like you, if you stage transports, this is the perfect thing for just yep. killing them. And they're heavy. Which yep. is bananas on with a, a reroll to hit and wound. With a reroll to hit and wound, D three shots blast. Basically, the three of them together for three seventy five can just ice your opponent out of the midboard, because like they come to the midfield, you're like, oh, I'm back to hitting on threes, and I'll reroll a hit, so I hit all of them, and I'm gonna reroll a wound, and one of those is devastating, and take take you know a save, right? Take a save and a dev wound at AP four, and then oh, right, you took a bunch of damage. All right, next support weapon shoots, and oh, that one got three shots, and oh, I'll make one of those wound rolls a six automatically. And it, it's pretty uh, Iceman nasty, if I say so myself. It's straight up nasty. Then uh, we got Drakari stuff. So we've got a Beastmaster who allows for a nice scout move. Oh, yeah, his whole Beast Pack scout moves up. Yep, his whole Beast Pack scout moves nine, has a bunch of wounds. Doesn't really do anything, but has a lot of wounds, a lot of bodies. It's a move and block, helps. tie things up, you yep. know, that type of thing. Ten Cabalite Warriors, they sticky objectives in transports. Yeah, I don't love them. They, I mean, they can get split into the Venom and not the Venom. Which yeah. is cool, but they're not, trash. Yeah, they're they are actual trash that runs around and doesn't do anything. I mean, you take like a dark lance and a blaster, blaster and like a blast pistol, and you put it, you split it in the venom, so the venom now fires it, and you don't full rerolls to hit because you're not dark elder anymore. But you get a reroll to hit. I don't know. I'm not super enthused. Uh, five by uh, three units of five mandrakes, which are a very good unit. They're just pretty good overall, but they go back into reserves and just a solid skirmisher. They also infiltrate as well. Um, so, just a, one of the better Jukari units for yes. sure. Then scourges. This is one of the other uh, solid units. They can have a natural fire and fade as well. So them and shadow specters can just pop out, shoot, get back behind. Terrain. Super annoying. And with the real hit and wound, the dark lances actually feel pretty decent here, uh, as opposed to a lot of dark elder units that give up the full rerolls to hit if from Drukari Pain Tokens in order to become Yunari, Scourges don't mind. Yeah. And then we've got the Venom here, which is, uh, I guess, splitting up the Cavalier Warriors for the most part. It is. But um, pretty cheap transport, but not particularly enthusing in any way. So here's here's the first thing. There is a combo with the Vizark and Ivrain. Vizark and Ivrain in a maximum size squad of troops is legitimately a good unit. Like, actually quite solid. In a five-man squad of troops, not so much. Let's go down what they do. I have been down this rabbit hole uh, not even that long ago, but uh, I, I definitely forget which rules come from which person. The Vizark, I believe, gives the unit fight first. Yep. So the Vizark and Yvrain can join the same unit. Okay. So the Vizark gives the unit fight first, which is, which is pretty tight. Um, every time he's selected to fight, he gets sustained hits, devastating wounds, or lethal hits. And in melee, he is all right. He's not bad. He's five attacks at five minus four damage two. Yeah, it's okay. It's pretty good. It's le legitimately not that bad. Which units can he join? Well, he can join um, troops. So you're going to join them to a 12-man squad troops. Okay. Uh, so the Vizark and Avrain both join there. And sustained hits two for him is is. Pretty gnarly if he if he gets the right hit rolls. Like he can do some real damage and he fights first. Right? What's the Here troop the data sheet rule that they'll get? So the troop data sheet rule that they get is um, every time they make a charge move, they get plus one to wound in combat. Yeah. Which is helpful for the Vizark, I'll tell you that. Yeah. You know, five attacks at plus one to wound, no save, sustained two. It, it can get a little gnarly, for sure. Their melee leaves something to be desired. Okay, like I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, but you, you, you definitely take a 12-man in this sort of thing, or maybe an 11-man because the last guy's a little inefficient. 
um, and you get them pretty large. Uh, everybody can take a Harlequin special weapon. The sergeant can get a power sword. Um, and then you can get four guys. If you can take 11 or more models, you can get four guys with um, neuro disruptors, four guys with fusion pistols. So you have four fusion pistols, and then everybody is four attacks at 411, which is not ideal. Plus one to wound helps. It's not super expensive. Everybody has an invuln. Is there a melee shred in Eldari? No. Okay. No, you don't do that. And then, but you do have the fusion pistols and the neuro disruptors and all of that. And then you have your brain. Uh, your brain gives feel no pain five plus to the unit, okay. which is nice considering they have a, an invuln. Is the troop is the troop master or not troop master the uh, lead player still two wounds? Uh, let me find out. Because Eldar kept that on their no. six. No, okay. No, 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 no. No, Harle Harlequin's got to suffer, unfortunately. I have a Harlequin army, not an Eldar army. They're different, I promise. Um, and then also, Yvrain restores D3 restored models every command phase on a, or her command phase on a two up. Okay. So, that's not, yeah, they have a four up invuln. You can give a minus one to hit. You can easily. stick one model out. They have grenades. The, I believe so, yes. You can throw a grenade, they'll lose some amount of models, you pull them back behind terrain. She's also pretty nasty in combat with plus one to wound. Five attacks at four, three, two, plus one to wound, dev wounds. So with fights first, her gun, by the way, is ridiculous. Go ahead and read that. 12 inch range, it's D6 plus three, but not blast. Hits on two, strength two, AP two, one damage, anti-infantry two plus, dev wounds, psychic. Okay. <laughs> She's good into infantry for sure. She's very good into infantry. So that through. whole package, I'm not going to say it's cheap. It's about 300 points. That is a, an amount. <laughs> it's an amount, but it is legitimately a pretty decent unit. I think yeah. Poland had it on their uh, Euro Trash team. Okay. Let's put it in. Like I, I legitimately let's, think it's pretty let, decent. Let's start with that. I mean, if you're running Dinar, you better run the like actual unit that... Yeah, it's like the unit that makes the, the army decent. Yep. So now we have we have that. They've, they're just kind of annoying to interface with. They're fast. Real units don't like necessarily get to tangle with them. And anything else runs into a billion attacks that are fighting first. Yeah, with plus one wound. Yeah, with plus one wound on the charge. Uh, you can fall back and charge. You res models. You have a feel no pain. And you can fall you can back, be, shoot, and charge, right? Yeah. You can be minus one to hit. You have fusion pistols, right? The damage adds up over time. You have your brain shooting. You have combat. It, it's it's legitimately pretty good. I've been sold on it. Um, it is expensive. We don't talk about that, though. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to cut out the... Uh, we need to trim the fat here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Venom That's plus good. the Warriors. Definitely have to go. Definitely have to go. I think the Beastmaster plus Mandrakes, you have better options in Eldar. Mandrakes don't actually get to win skirmish fights because they don't have reels to hit. Yeah. Um, so the Scourges, I like the Scourges. I like the Scourges, I like the troops. The rest of this, not so much. Um, there's been an extended conversation in the chat about minus one damage versus fight on death. Um, you can't, fight on death is not the unit fighting. It is a model fighting. And so when the, when the models fight, you don't get to pop any strats that say the unit has to fight. That's how it works. All right, so let's see where we're at if we if we go here. If we just leave the scourges, which I think the scourges are pretty good with a reel to hit, reel to wound. What else in Jukari could is worth taking? Because obviously you don't get the sky sky splinter benefits. Is there anything else? <laughs> Their data sheets like solo Talos is something that maybe could just stand on objectives for Eldar because Eldar also have very few units that actually want to stand on objectives. So that is also where the troops can come into play here. Yeah. You put like a guy out and die and get back uh, onto the objective. Yeah, heal back onto it. Heal back on. Um, Does we, she only heal her unit or she heals nearby units too? Her unit. Just her. Uh, two up, she heals D3. All right, well, uh, there's an altar way, way leaper that's missing. From, oh, we can't take him because he can't be the warlord. Yeah, he doesn't get you the CP. That's so... He can still exist, but he doesn't get you the CP. Let me see if your brain has to be the warlord yeah, for your Yeah, she definitely does. She definitely does. That's sad. That that's that's sad. Uh, okay. We can still run Fuegan though. We certainly can, and I do like Fugan. 
Or Fugan, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I have no idea. Who knows how to pronounce Somebody's it? Somebody's going to be mad and shout about the mispronunciation. It's all made up, guys. <laughs> That's in before you find out that it's like some obscure <laughs> Celtic. Uh, Fuck on. It's actually pronounced uh, Figgy. <laughs> figgy Smalls. 115, okay. Because get back up on an objective is one way to actually hold primary. That's true. You can just take a regular dude with Phoenix Gem, like take an. Uh, a, yeah, we could still take the... The Farseer? Yeah. You can take a Farseer. Well, that's actually not bad, because the Farseer can minus one to wound this unit, too, right? Yes. Yes, that is part well, of the If combo. we're putting all our resources into this thing, let's slam a fate of Farseer. Yeah, here. I mean, you could be minus one to hit, minus one to wound, four up in turn volume, fate dies to a five six. up, feel no pain, turn a fate die to a six, let's get D3 it. back. Do it. Like, it is legitimately an annoying thing to deal with. Let's do it. It's all in. So, Farseer... We are left with not as many points as I would like after oh, this. Fugan gonna... might actually end up getting cut, to be honest with you. Because um, I want more trash. Um, but this is going to be a Farseer. And he is going to be... I mean, if we're taking... points, right? We're taking the Phoenix Gem, right? Yeah, might as well. So you can walk onto an objective and hold it that way as well. Because he dies, come back into phase, and your opponent's like, oh, damn, I'd like to keep shooting at him. You're like, he can't. You, you, just, you can't. You can grab the D cannon and throw it in this Phoenix gem. <clears throat> oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Thanks. I forgot about that. That's all good. Whoop. Okay. People are going to be like, hidden leaks of Eldar uh, nerfs. I, I think uh, D cannons are still well worth running. Frankly. I think they are. I mean, we're left with 100 and. I'm personally skeptical on points. the scourges. I'm, I'm, trying I'm, to be nice. I'm trying to be nice here. I know you're being nice. But we're already building around like a 500-point unit at this point, <laughs> and that's already enough, in my opinion. So scourges, right? Fire and fade is a great rule, but when you have a bunch of models that have a poor... Oh, you can't play Phoenix Lords in Inari. I've... That is correct. Okay, well, we save points that way. Hey what other Carry things? On. What other things can't we run? I, I think that's it. It's just Phoenix Lords? I think it's just Phoenix Lords, and uh, your brain has to, be the, has to be the Warlord. Okay. Uh, so, Scourges, you get a handful of anti-tank shots if you run the Dark Lances or the Haywire Blasters, whatever you want to run. The problem here is you get a reroll to hit, a reroll to wound. It's still very inconsistent, and there's a lot of minus to hit in the game. I frankly have, bear have seen, I've literally stood my armies out in the open against 15 Scourges and not cared a single amount about them. Oh, For I think you also can't run Covens, so the, the Talos and stuff else okay. doesn't okay. work, work. But yes, they... Um, I frankly don't think they're even that great. Certainly not in Eldar, where there's way better options. Yeah, Eldar. I know we're playing Yanari, but at the same time, like let's not let's run the better options, which is, quote unquote, the Eldar book. Yeah, the Eldar book is just better than the Dark Eldar book. It's just way better. Why wouldn't we run three Warwalkers instead yeah, of this? If, oh my God, you can just get three Warwalkers instead of that, and that is probably what we're gonna do. <laughs> um, I just think. <laughs> yeah, no. So the thing is, Sky Splinter detachment is some brutal, like broken rules. It's totally fine. In fact, it's more than fine. Yeah, it's like the Skatari Hunter cohort. Like, awesome rules. Awesome Great detachment. Rules. But awesome man, detachment. The, deta but like, the data sheets leave a lot to be the desired. The units. Uh, not, not ideal. I don't feel bad about sure. cutting the Jukari because we're running this big unit. Yeah, you, you still get a cool Yanari thing, which is the Vizark, you bring 12 troops. You give them minus one to hit. I mean... <laughs> yeah, maybe. the Straka, you can do lightning fast, and they can be minus one to wound from the uh, whatever fortune. Yeah, so minus one to wound, minus one to hit, four up in Vuln, five up feel no pain, res D, three miles. They're legitimately very annoying to get rid of. Um, so how many points do we have left right now? And the answer is uh, quite a few. We have 600 points. Well, we opened we opened space. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Those two car units are expensive. <laughs> oh, oh, big time. Um, okay, uh, do we just get the third one? I like how the editing here was just... <laughs> Just selecting the entire <laughs> <laughs> control all delete. delete. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not interested in having Drukari gonna... data sheets in my army. I'm, I'm like, like Mandrakes are the only one that I would actually consider. And I, I mm, Mandrakes versus Rangers is an interesting discussion, at least. Honestly, the Archon in the Slith Urkel parties is actually hilarious, but you're not getting them full rerolls, so they're less. Yeah, yeah. If if you had full rerolls to Although hit, minus one to wound on them is pretty annoying. It is, I don't actually know if you can do that. Oh, fair enough. Um, but also, you're not fully rolling to hit and wound, so I care about it a lot less. Did Jakari not have the Eldari keyword? 
because I assume it keys off of that. Without <laughs> without minus Clearly one, we don't without play four rolls right. to hit and wound, I don't particularly care. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Beastmaster's all right, but like when you compare Beastmaster to Warp Spiders, I want the Warp Spiders. Yeah, like, 100%. That's, that's really just how that works. Um, all right, so let's. we have 600 points. We could include some characters. Like we could give this 12-man troop unit rerolls to hit, which is pretty nuts with sustained two off the Vizark and things like that. Um, and then Yvrain's shooting attack really likes rerolls to hit. I'm not against rerolls to hit here. Let's let's see what else we could have first. Cause I, so we have options. We've got third unit of warp spiders, one of the best units in the whole game. We could add second I, unit. I'm of just hawks. doing that right now. Okay. Do so now. warp spiders and swooping hawks are also very good into Catan. Yep. Um, which is very relevant here. So one unit of warp spiders and swooping hawks doesn't kill a Catan, but you're so fast that you can just have twenty warp spiders slash swooping hawks. Gang up on a katan, throw a grenade, shoot it with all their damage one guns that are lethal hits or dev wounds or whatever, and kill it. Like basically every time. And if they move, then the war star shoots them again. Yeah, like if they live they on one or two. They have a couple D to finish it off. Exactly. So this army is actually very good at killing katan as long the the thing they're bad at is wraiths. And troops will actually tie up wraiths for a decent amount of time. Minus one to hit, minus one to wound. Minus one to hit, minus one to wound is actually very annoying. Yes. Um. They're not great at killing, but like the Vizark will kill the little nerd leading the unit. Precision, baby. Yeah, like he wounds on fours, they don't get a save, and he's sustained too. It's just like, all right, you're dead. Now you don't have a feel no pain. I'm yeah. gonna fall back, shoot you with Inferno pistol, shoot you with support weapons, charge back in. Yeah. Um, so at least that's an answer to, to Necrons, which is traditionally a very hard matchup. We can handle the Catan, we can handle the race ish. You have ability to outplay people, which you don't necessarily have in the standard build. Okay, so we have 485 points left after adding the third Warp Spider. I like a second unit of Swooping Hawks. Yeah, I think they're um, pretty good. A great mission play, also good trash, um, good screen in your backfield because they can go back into reserve when they're not needed back there. Because D cannons don't really sit in your backfield, they sit like as close to the middle area as possible, so they project their yeah. 24 inch range. They sit in a ruin like a third of the way up the board. Yeah. So the Autark Wayleaper is an interesting idea. I mean, it's really good data sheet. The problem is he needs to be your warlord to get you the CP. Which and your is a brain has to be the warlord. That. Yeah. Um, but he's still a good one up, although pricey for not getting you the extra CP. Uh, but still very good. All right. I like Warwalkers. I think they're a great unit. Um, Let's see what else. Hold we on. Yeah. We're not Yunari right now. Uh, we have to run a Drukari data sheet? No, no, no. Like... Like, we just don't have to make you rain the Warlord. We're not including Dark Elder units. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we're not even playing Yunari. Well. <laughs> I mean, we're playing a really cool, like, troops unit that's super fun, and I, I would totally that, run that unit. This person wants to run Drukhar or uh, Yunari. All right, let's add Mandrakes. Screw it, right? Like, one, Rangers one. become Mandrakes. That's one unit of Mandrakes. very easy. <laughs> I, like, my point was we can actually get the Autark. Yeah, I, I know. I guess they, they if they wanted to play Elder, they'd put an Elder list in. Okay. We'll, we'll, boop, boop. we'll, we'll like lean on a little bit. It's f All right. So there we go. I'll just add three Mandrakes. We don't need three super, uh, two Swooping Hawks then because they kind of overlap. They probably they, do. They both go back into reserve. God, swooping Hawks are better. All right. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on. I'm going to scan oh, yeah, the, go for it. the Eldari data sheets. So I want some amount of shooting out of this. We have a lot of Skirmish. We have a lot of close range shooting. The Shadow Spectres are pretty good. Warp Spiders are pretty good. Swooping Hawks are pretty good. Support weapons handle a lot of things, but not, not for necessarily downtime. reliably. I really liked the suggestion of three Warwalkers that you had. Yeah, I really like Warwalkers. Fire Prisms totally work, but they're more expensive, and I like the MSU aspect that we're going for. So, because uh, we have one expensive area of the board, and then we need a lot of stuff elsewhere. Yeah. They also hold objectives annoyingly well because mm -hmm. of that minus one to wound and the invuln and fake I, dice. I trust Quentin. Quentin doesn't love fire prisms. I think if you're teching for a meta where you know for a fact, yeah, like your Iron opponents Storm. are going to be running Iron Storm and like just a bunch of vehicles, then fire prisms can see the light of day. I really think they're good there, but. If you're dealing with like an all comers kind of list, not necessarily. Uh, Are Skyweavers or any of the other Harlequin units worth anything? Let's uh, let's go down the rabbit hole. The answer is no, by the way, but we can get there together. Okay, so <laughs> it's 95 points for two, 190 for four, right? 
They are toughness four with three wounds and a four pinfall. OC two, because there's two dudes on the bike, I suppose. Rain, uh, war gear options. You can have uh, either a shuriken cannon or a haywire cannon. And then you can either have star bolas or a zephyr glaive. What's their data sheet rule? So their data sheet rule is every time they end a normal move, you pick an enemy unit you moved over, not monster and vehicle. Roll a d6 for every model in the unit on a four plus, they take a mortal wound. No. That is horrible. <laughs> but let's, maybe their weapons make up for it. <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, I mean, they, they don't. They're not like terrible weapons, but they are expensive let's the, let's and fragile. Let's get the war fragile. in here. Yeah. They're expensive and fragile. That's the problem. Okay, so we've got War Walkers. We could do the Death Jester with Fates. That is something that is actually pretty Death cool. Jester with Fates Messenger is sick. That is that is actually sick. All right, let's 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 grab him. Let's, let's, yeah, let's do that. Because we still got room for We're not running so many characters where we're too worried about Assassinate, frankly. No. And that, that dude does actually crack. Um, so we're looking at a Death Jester. Like, he, he is, he's legitimately also a very good unit. And we're sticking to my... Um, my maxim when I write lists, which is don't take bad units. I mean, it's very simple, but it's so easy to trick yourself into running bad units. Like, it really is. Look, look at this troop unit, for example. Um, no, I, I actually do think that the, uh, that the troop unit's good. It's just expensive, which is not necessarily a problem. It's just good. All right. And we got War Walkers. How Let's, many points is the Fate Weavers? Or Fate Fates, oh, yeah, let me add that in. I think he's 105. Yeah, he's 105. So he will go in, Boop. and Fate's uh, Messenger is the turning dice to a six, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's good for him, because he can be uh, sustained hits three. Yeah. So you just roll, you get a re-roll, and then you flip one to a six, and you're just like, Bruh. Yeah, he, he shoots. <laughs> yeah. He be shooting. He, he, be, he be shooting. He How be many scooting. points do we have left before we add the War Walkers? Uh, 305, which is... Just a skosh too much for three war walkers. Luckily, there are things we can do about this. All right. So what do you want to cut down? Well, let's see how many points. I believe we need 25 points here if we add triple war walker. Oh, let me... Sorry. I did not swap the rangers and whatnot for mandrakes. Let me do that. It's a little more expensive. So mandrakes are... Da, 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 there we go. Okay, we have 230 points, so we will need to cut something real if we want. Um, so we could cut one shot of Spectre unit, get all three? Or is that five uh, points off? Uh, that is five points off. We could just go with two War Walkers. Yeah, I think two is fine. Two War Walkers is probably okay. I mean, we would need 100 points if we wanted to do it because we're 10 points under. Okay. So that could be the Death Jester becomes the third War Walker. But honestly, the Death Jester's cool, and I'm not, I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other. Okay. Let's add two of them. This will be double Bright Lance, I assume. Oh, yeah. It's, unfortunately, in 10th edition, you just take the best loadout, and there's no like room for anything else. How many points do we have left? Five. Uh, ten. Sorry, ten. Ten. There's nothing to do in Eldar with 10 points. I'll tell you what you actually Mandrakes do with 10 points. Mandrakes to Swooping Hawks, baby. Yeah, it's, uh, we're, we're Yunari, so we can take one squad of Mandrakes. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is what you do. <laughs> that but, is like, exactly what you do. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't feel good, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> All right, well, that is a list. I mean, that's, that's not a bad list. If I were playing into this list... Let's, let's say specifically in teams. If I were playing into this list in teams, I would turn to my, my team and go, I'll promise you a 10. <laughs> but I'm not promising you anything more than that. Yeah. I played into, uh, at Eurotrash, I played into Team Germany's Eldar player, who naturally is quite good. And I held all the goddamn objectives on the board. And it didn't matter. He got a 9 out of the matchup. Um, because you can take your warp spiders, move them 24 into midfield, start deploy homers, fire and fade them into my deployment zone, and score four on it. Seems good. That's how the order works, unfortunately. <laughs> so I was begging him to stop scoring secondaries, and he would not. Uh, it was also ritual, so he took cleanse, and a trail of objectives ran away from me. Yeah. As he was just like, spawn an objective, cleanse two. Spawn an objective, cleanse two. I was like, oh, stop. <laughs> but 
But yeah, I, I think this is a nice mix of units. It'd be interesting to see how the troop unit performs. Honestly, I'd like to see that on the table. I really it's would. It's cool. I think it is. I think it's sick. It's three seventy. Yeah, it's not cheap. Plus the first here. But uh, uh, I mean, that's the support that it needs to to prosper. So. Yeah, I mean, what we could do is we could take Phoenix Gem off. The, uh, Farseer with Phoenix Gem is a way to like hold an objective. In the, yeah. You're not really doing that with the Farseer, though. I think you could take the Phoenix Gem off, make Swooping Hawks Shadow Specters. Yeah, I don't have a strong. It's all opinion. small changes. Yep, I don't have a strong uh, opinion there. Swollen, you know. Hopefully, you enjoy this one. Uh, let us know how it performs. I'd be excited to see how the troop unit does for you. And um, if you want to run more Drukhari, you can. But I think. Those, those Eldar data sheets just so good. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. Once you once you can take Eldar data sheets, you're gonna have a hard time coming up with reasons <laughs> not to. I'll be I'll be honest. Real talk. What you do is you cut a unit swooping hawks, the mandrakes. You now don't have your rain be the warlord. You still take her. Talk. And you take a uh, the way leaper. You take an autark way leaper with phoenix gem. You, you, that's just what you do. You have points left over. All right. Uh, no, you, the Eldar strat, you do not have to shoot to fire You don't have to resolve attacks. You just end of your movement, something can move. Yep. Eldar's is just better than yours. I don't know how to explain it. All right. Let's, uh, let's go into the last one. Necrons. Okay, this is Ilza and uh, the Hypercrypt Legion Necrons. So in this list, we've got the Transcendent Catan. We can teleport around. We've got the Catan Shard of the Nightbringer. One, uh, my, in my opinion, the best of the Catan. Two hex mark destroyers. They're the remaining loan op available in this. And Dimensional Overseer lets you put a fourth unit in Hyperphase. Then we have the Seraptic Heavy Construct, which is the big Titanic Forge World unit that shoots pretty darn hard. Six Locust Destroyers at 180 points. Um, and one solo Locust Destroyer to be trash. Then three by three Locust Heavy Destroyers with the um, two units of Gauss, one unit of the Emetic, and then finally three Canoptic Scarabs. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. Um, did they explain anything about the list? Yes, uh, not a ton, but would love to get some feedback on this list from a tournament, pers tournament perspective. Can a Seraptic be run as an alternative to the Monolith, or is it a lost cause GW terrain format? GW makes the Seraptic a lot better. It uh, is so much easier to tap terrain and see through it. I'll tell you as the index, as a person who has played the Lord of Skulls. <laughs> yeah, it is much easier to use on Games Workshop terrain. Now, you're playing Hypercrypt, so Hypercrypt's main benefit is that with the 3.1 away strat and Chronomancers plus infantry, you can move block and do a lot of nonsense to your opponent. However, I don't think you're really realistically ever picking the Seraptic up and dropping it 3.1 away in most circumstances because your opponent with any amount of units in the middle of the table will stop you from going anywhere relevant and you'll just be better walking up, in my opinion, with how like thick it is and gangly. It's just, if your opponent has any models in the center of the table, you will not be able to place it on their half of the it, board. It's big. It's a large boy, that's for sure. So I don't think you get a ton of value out of Hypercrypt from that specifically, and the rest of your list isn't really designed to get the benefits of Hypercrypt, in my opinion. So it, what it looks like to me, right, is the Seraptic doesn't necessarily, maybe it teleports once yeah. to like tap a terrain feature or something it couldn't move to. Um, but it seems to me like what's going to teleport here most of the time are going to be destroyers. Now, the downside here is they don't have deep strike, yep. which means that one unit gets to teleport three inches away every turn. Mm -hmm. The rest have to come in off board edges. And I will tell you, coming in off board edges on GW terrain ain't all it's cracked up to be. Like, it, it, with long range shooting, coming in off a of board edge is very predictable to places you can go to see things. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just say that. There's long lanes of fire, but there's only like two or three. So when you come in off a board edge, you're like, I can be here and see stuff, or I can be here and see stuff, and your opponent can play around that. Otherwise, you're showing up behind a wall. So there's a couple detachments where you can get benefits for Strat. So the best one in this is that you can get the four up invuln on it uh, via the Strat, and that's basically the only benefit. You can 3.1 away technically, but like I said, Does the Strat pick not have an invuln? It has a five up. Okay. It's a three up save, five up invuln. Got it. It's uh, a knight. So right. You can give it a, a four up invuln with that strat. So there's a couple other detachments. You can play Awakened Dynasty. In that, you can run. 
They used it used to be the Sovereign Coronal. It, they changed its name, but it's a six and four plus one to hit for non-character units now. So it can get plus one to hit, which obviously is quite good. Makes it even more efficient. Or you could put in a Basin's Phalanx, and it acts as the minus one damage strat. Yeah, a knight body, right? Toughness 12 with skoshes of wounds with minus one damage is very hard to put away. I think it, the obeisance is legitimately the best attachment for this because minus one damage, this thing's just going to get shot all the time. I have a question for you. Yeah. You know what other model you like in obeisance phalanx? Yeah. Do they, does it buff the seraptic with the real ones to hit wound? The, the silent king? He 100% does. He doesn't, he also can be minus one damage as well. It's pretty gross. Um, so, yes, uh, you don't know exactly where I'm going. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> big boy's doing big things. So, I think we actually switched the detachment here, personally. Also, destroyers benefit a lot from obeisance because they have a 1 CP crit 5 strat, which means you don't have to run the lords, which you're not running any of the lords, but your six man locust destroyer unit for 180 points coming in off the board edge will just get crit 5s for their lethals. I, I definitely need to look up how to spell obeisance. Not phalanx, though. Okay, we are now in Obeisance Phalanx. All right, so let's start by cutting these Hexmark Destroyers because I really just don't value them very highly. Yeah, they're, they're, kind, of, they're kind of not great. They're You're, alone up, but they do nothing. It's not like Necrons have a problem standing on places and your opponent not being able to get you off of that objective. You don't need lone ops. Mm -hmm. Is there an enhancement in Obeisance that you want? Uh, Do you remember what they there are? There is a funny one. There's a funny one. I, did, I don't have the rules, my man. Oh, yeah. So I forget what it's called. Yeah, but we, don't, we don't get those, uh, those coupon codes to get, the, uh, to get the armies, so only one of us has it in his phone. So there's one where if you kill something in melee, if you kill a character in melee, the, your opponent takes minus one CP. <laughs> I remember that. That's pretty funny. Uh, we would have to put it on a character where it could work, which we probably won't do in this version. No, I, I think if you could put enhancements on Epicures, you'd put it on the Silent King, but you, you I think can't most of the other ones are not really going to come up yet. It's so Overlord model. Each time the bear's unit destroys an enemy. I mean, we could put it on a... Um, in shooting, too? Each time the Bears unit destroys an enemy character unit, your opponent loses one CP. Can you just put it on a shooting unit that just shoots? You would. You could put it on Immortals. You could put it on a Warrior Brick. That's not that great. So Immortals is the best, but like it's not guaranteed. But if you chip it down with some actual killers, and then just finish it off with them, I think we're. I yeah. think we're running way too many expensive single models to really. Yeah. Be, be fluffing around with uh, with jank, and none of the others are worth it. No. The the reason you run this detachment is because you have minus one damage on a vehicle unit, and you have crit fives. So we're going to run units that benefit from those two strats. Hot. All right. Where are we starting? Cut Where, these hex marks. Cut yep. the Catan. He both of them? Yeah. Or do you want to keep the Nightbringer? We'll cut them. Nightbringer, good, though. Yeah, but there's so many counters in the I'm game. Gonna, I'm going to keep the Nightbringer over here. Okay. You can keep them over there, but the, the game is literally designed to kill uh, Catan right now. I don't, yeah, but uh, even even then, just having a Catan that rerolls once to hit and wound standing next to the... Saying next to the Seraptic and whatnot. And the Silent King? And the Silent so, King? It's too many points. You just ball up the table, and you're like, all right, someone's catching these Nightbringing hands. Okay. Uh, heavy Locust Destroyers, I don't particularly like, but the regular Locusts, I like. All right. So we're just going to get the Silent King here. Yep. The okay, the reason you ring the Silent King is because he'll give the Seraptic reroll once to hit, once to wound, or ignore mods. Both of them are very good. He's also a good data sheet by himself. He's also a good data sheet by himself, and um, he benefits a lot from minus one damage. He's ludicrously difficult to deal with with it. Oh, yeah, so. it's, it's, it's actually insane trying to deal with the Silent King at that point. So he's 420, Yep. and he will he'll blaze it along with the Seraptic Heavy Construct. All right, so we got two big boys, and uh, cut these Locust Heavy Destroyers. Okay, so what do we build around? So we need screens to stop like crazy melee units from hitting the Seraptic, effectively. We need to be able to just shoot with it every turn. Because um, minus one damage will go a long way, but we don't want it to be shot a bunch and then finished off in combat. So we need some amount of screens. I think flayed ones are actually very good in this detachment because if we look at their rules, um, real quick, Mr. Flayed ones, they have sustained on their weapons which they benefit quite a bit from the uh, crit strat. Can they get the crit fives? Or they, do they have to be like noble or something? No, I think it's just any Necron unit. I'll check in a second. But So their melee weapons are sustained one twin-linked. 411's pretty 4 -1 -1, decent. 411, but twin-linked, that, that's not bad. Four attacks each. 
They're stealth, they infiltrate, so they are that first layer up. And then if the opponent is below half strength, they every successful hit roll, they like obliterate things that are are like severely wounded. Yeah. Which I mean not, not really a niche you need, but they'll they'll do good work before that too. Yeah, it's called yeah, it's just one Necrons unit that isn't Titanic, you get crit fives on. So you're thinking like what, five of them? How many points is that? Yeah, there's seventy points for five. I think we run um, How many are you thinking? I like one ten man. And then probably two five mans. Okay. Because they, they beat up enemy trash quite effectively. Yes. Yeah, they're very skirmish winner. <laughs> anything anything that does good damage into other skirmishers. And we need is the a pretty... we need the forward pressure. We need the infiltrate, in my opinion. Just to keep people off of the Seraptic? Yep. Let's get a second unit of Locust Destroyers. I really like these guys coming in from the board edge and just, once again, crit fives just out of nowhere. Yeah. Boom. And they, they natively reroll uh, ones against the closest eligible or full rerolls on enemies on objectives. Okay, seems so pretty good. Full rerolls to hit crit fives, lethal. It's, it's pretty darn solid. We still have a lot of points to work with here. Yeah, we're going to try and build as much stuff around this uh, archetype um, as possible. Gany in the chat here has an interesting... Um, idea, which is that Lich Guard, which do get buffed by this detachment, are pretty dirt cheap right now. They are dirt They're cheap. They're like 17 points a model. They have two attacks, or three on the the, the worst version. I think you take the, the three because you have the invul, and you just tie people up in the middle of the board. I understand they don't do what you want Lich Guard to do, but they're also 17 points a model. They are also 17 points, but I think we can get better things for still relatively cheap. Okay. But well, we can think about it. They do get the benefit of the actual rule, and they can also get plus one OC in this detachment, which is not bad. But I'm spamming the minus one damage crit fives button, and I don't want to spend any CP on anything else, really. Fair enough. Try we stalkers. have 280 points left, not as much as you might want. Okay. Well, let's get at least one Triarch Stalker. Okay, what does it do? It's 125. If it hits a target, it get, and we're going to put the Goss weapon on it. If it hits a target, it uh, and it gets plus one to wound in this detachment against the target. Um, and it can be minus one damage. It has a 8-inch scout move. 125. Thank you. And Goss, the Goss weapon is going to be on there. So the thing is, if it hits a target, it ignores cover on it. And ignores cover, both the Silent King, Seraptic, and the Locust Destroyers really appreciate that. Okay. Okay, and what do we have left? 155 points. 155 points. So what that could be is a second Stalker and a Solo Destroyer. That's probably the direction that we go. Although I don't think we need this many um, Scarabs either. Two units of Scarabs is enough to hold your backfield. Fair enough. So if We have we... no Cryptex, so they're never going to have OC in this detachment. So I honestly prefer Solo Locusts personally. Okay. What we can also do is we can cut one. And that gets us the points after a second stalker to get a 10-man fleet one instead of a 5-man, if you want. No, I like having two fives, because they can send the backfield as well if I really cool. need it. Are we thinking all the scarabs go, because they can't possibly ever hold an objective? Yeah, they're better screening your backfield, but at the same time, whatever. Cut them. Cut them? Yeah. If we really need, if we're really playing against that type of army, we can use the two 5-mans to, to do that. Okay. I will add in a solo locust. Yep. So, boop, and It'll then get rid of the S. It'll be 30. It'll be 30. Yeah, because they can't actually, like, hold objectives, which is kind of annoying. It's, it's The far cry from being obsec last edition. Okay, and then a solo destroyer. Mm -hmm. So that does free up some amount of points. We have 245 points left on the list currently pictured. Okay, 245. That's an interesting number. So... It's almost... 90. It is almost. Almost 90. Uh, 245 is almost two stalkers. Um, yeah, there's a variety of things we could add here. Um, <laughs> could add a reanimator. Could add the reanimator. It is nice healing 2d3 on these guys because we're keeping them alive. Yeah, let's add the reanimator because it can also sit on our home objective if you really want it to. And then we have 170 left after that. Okay. Yeah, we do need something to hold our home objective. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Or, let's or add just a, to walk up next to the Silent King and Seraptic. Let's add a second uh, Triarch Stalker. Okay. And then we're left with not enough points to really do anything with, unfortunately. I think we have 25 points left at the, after that. 45. So that could be one squad of scarabs. 
Uh, we can do one squad of scarabs and have it be a screen and mission type thing. Um, or 45 points, we could hmm, get upgrade something. It's not really, really much. Yeah, there's. I mean, upgrade the Locust Destroyer to a unit of Tomb Blades. Could do that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not against that. I like that a, a good map. Yeah. It's another move block tool that we can use, and it does it does mission stuff. Yeah, because that's what we need right now. Like, I mean, that's basically just what we need is we need a uh, just something some to amount, do mission, some amount of things, and then we'll probably put the particle beamers on it, just for a couple extra dev wounds. Cool. Cool. That's that's something that uh, I would uh, actually think about running for Obeisance Phalanx and supporting the the Seraptic here. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't want the Seraptic heavy construct, right? The thing shoots, man. I mean, we didn't talk about the profile, but you take this sing two singularity generators. Um, a Seraptic with reroll ones, reroll ones is legitimately going to tear people apart. <laughs> so you get two of these weapons: thirty-six inch range, two d six blast. So it's forty-six from the from with him. double blast. Hitting on threes, strength 10, AP 3, and they could ignore cover, thanks to the Triarch Stalkers. Flat 4 damage, dev wounds. <laughs> I mean, that's just nasty. Yeah. <laughs> that's just completely nasty. Like, uh, that even kills things like Land Raiders just by rolling enough a couple wounds. sixes. Yeah. Yeah, like, you're just dead. Oops. <laughs> you're like, whoa, four sixes. Oh. You're, you're gone. gone, yeah. <laughs> this is an average of... What, 14 it's shots? 14 Most shots. of them are going to hit. Um, and then, because threes are all ones, and then you're wounding on fives are all ones. So you're going to hand them like two to three saves, two to three dev wounds, yep. fail a couple, gone. <laughs> <laughs> Just bye. And it keeps on rocking and rolling. We have the reanimator here, so with the minus one damage, the heal back. Um, one of the things we could think about here is if we wanted to go for the full heal package, we would run a Technomancer with probably three wraiths. And he would also be healing the Seraptic D3. I don't hate that. Um, I don't need that, though. Yeah. Like, you would probably take the place of the second Stalker or something. Yeah, that's another option you could run. Yeah, I mean, you could also you could also take a really stupid build that was probably decent for teams. And that build would be Silent King, Seraptic, Reanimator, 18 Wraiths. And you're left over with, like, 20 points. I don't know. Not a lot is the point. <laughs> Um, I mean, you probably have like two to three hundred there for, for nonsense. Yeah. And that is just there for teams. And you just tell your opponent, yeah, you can't move. Yeah. Stop. Stop moving. I'm not trying to be good into the field. I'm just trying to be good into you. And, and it will be awesome into certain matchups. And then that version, you would almost certainly run Canopti Court and just get the benefit on the race. Yeah. Or you run Obeisance and just keep the, make the yeah, Seraptic do all the damage. things yeah. that you want to do. Uh, either way works. But I legitimately think this the minus one damage really is extremely annoying uh, for both Silent King and Seraptic. They take a lot of damage to kill, yeah. especially when you heal them back. Silent King minus one damage is just stop trying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what, how else to put it, man. Yeah, yeah. Just, He's just tough to kill. And then crit fives is just good on a lot of the units that you can yeah. bring. Locust Destroyers, lethal fives without any character, full rerolls to hit. You'll, still, you'll crack through a lot of stuff. Just yeah, And you get some nice reserve pressure, which Necrons mm -hmm. typically don't have. I think you have one on the board, one off the board, and you wrap it in grass, because they come off the flanks, right? Yeah. yeah. They come up in six. And the flayed ones are decent for, for screening. I mean, you could also decide, hey, you just want you know three by five, and then take your 70 points and put it somewhere else into other screens, and you can do that, yeah. too. I like one time, man, because like with, with the crit fives, all of a sudden, they can actually punch up quite a bit with twin linked. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, I think there's actually a lot of uh, a lot of options there. Yeah. Seriously, that's 40 attacks with sustained one crit fives, and then you'll be rerolling ones to hit. Yeah. And you just motor the Silent King up to. Him. Yeah. Exactly. And you're like, boom, just take a thousand saves. It's like 40 attacks, like 50 hits or some nonsense yeah. if you reroll ones. And then twin linked. It's yeah. Just... It's probably a little less than that, but like, it's it's a lot. It's solid. <laughs> so. Uh, and you can ignore mods, so if your opponent has uh, armor, armor contempt. contempt, you're like, no, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you enjoyed this one, Ilza. Um, this should be an interesting list to play. Let us know how, uh, how you do with it and whether you get it on the table. But I think uh, the Seraptic will benefit a lot from this one. Absolutely. 
All right. Well, uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Hope you enjoyed this Fix My List. Please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends about us. All of that massively helps us um, you know, grow the channel. Leave a comment below letting us know what you thought of the different lists and which one uh, you would actually enjoy testing out. And then also, um, please tell your friends about us and uh, spread the word about Art of War. Absolutely. Now, Fix My List happens every Thursday, so next week there'll be a different uh, you know, uh, overall super faction. So we switch through Chaos, Imperium, um, Xenos, Adeptus Astartes, and sometimes when codexes come out, we'll do special ones on those. And if you want to submit your list, check out the war room, theworm.vhx.tv. There's a three-day free trial. Once you join our community in there, uh, once you have worm access, you will be able to post in the Fix My List submission channel. Every week, you can submit your lists, and uh, we pick three of them, and we uh, edit them. So good chance that you get picked. Absolutely. All Absolutely. Right. Thank you so much, everybody, for all your support. We got all the super chats and everything. Uh, possibly, actually. Let's do that. Let's triple check. Um, sorry. Aiden Smith says, Grim Demeanor is awesome until you forget it for an entire GT. If you could choose the next unit release for Votan, what would it be? So, definitely don't forget Grim Demeanor. Super good into the meta right now. If I could choose the next unit release for Votan, they desperately need an infiltrating unit. They have a lot of scout moves, and any army that infiltrates can basically block their forward pressure. Yeah. Um, so having an amount of infiltrate isn't guaranteed, but you'll at least threaten to be able to push that back and have your space to, to pregame move. So I think infiltrating is something Votan desperately needs with how slow the army is overall outside of those scout moves. And then Tatters1717 uh, says, Pure Creek, can I run Death Riders effectively? You can. I mean, you can play an infantry spam version or transport spam version with a bunch of uh, Death Riders if you want. Uh, one of my coaching clients actually played against somebody who had tons of bodies all over the board and all the different horses. Um, and it's just, it's a lot. It's, it's like playing Endless Swarm or playing, um, I guess, the Crew Detachment, where you just have so many bodies on the board. Some armies are built to kill very elite things like Catan, and then you should all of a sudden have, you know, like 200 plus wounds on the table, and they're like, well... Chipping through this is not going to be that easy. So you could definitely try that. Yeah. And also, if you're ever teams focused, that sort of list is good there. Yep. You can just guarantee a points floor. Exactly. And get some things. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for your support. Really appreciate and hope you enjoyed hanging out with us. And uh, we will see you all soon for plenty more. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.